A guy came by to see you this afternoon. Who? I don't know, but he had a knife. Oh, him. So you know who I'm talking about? Oh, it could be one of a couple of guys. Well, do you want me to describe the knife? Big one, right? Big enough. <sighs> yeah, I know who <clears throat> you mean. Well, who is he? He's some jerk-off who owns a gas station. Well, how is that relevant to his visiting you with a knife? What did he say? Well, he said a lot of things. Where do you want me to start? Well, was he upset? <laughs> I'll say. Uh, in fact, I'd be willing to go out on a limb and say he was angry. Did he brandish a knife? Oh, big time. In fact, I'd call it felony brandishing. Oh, I knew I shouldn't have given him my address. Jerry. Actually, it's my address. Oh. Well, what did I say? You said you shouldn't have given him your address. Well, I live here, too. No. No, you're staying here, not living here. It's almost the same thing. No. No, it's entirely different. How is it different? Let me put it to you this way. The fact that your car broke down out in front of my house does not give you license to move in. I needed help. I know that. <laughs> But when you knocked on my door and said your engine had blown up and you wanted to put a few things in my, my living room, I didn't realize you were going to move in permanently. Look, I had some valuable things in my car, and I didn't want thieves to see them and smash the windows and take them. Well, that's what I kind of thought you meant. <laughs> see, but <clears throat> that time I didn't realize that one of those so-called valuables was a fold-out cot and that you'd be spending the next six weeks in my living room. See, I didn't get that picture at all when you asked me to put a few things in my house. A question of semantics. Oh, and the guy with the knife, is that a question of semantics also? I think that's more of a question on the international trade deficit. Oh, was he a foreigner? No, but clearly his enterprise relies heavily upon the importation of foreign substances, subjecting the, his establishment to the vagaries of the international political climate. Slipshod Middle Eastern diplomacy not to mention local environmental constraints. And that's why he came after you with a knife? Well, I don't think he came after me so much as what I represent. And what is that? <laughs> well, you ought to know, because you're in the same boat. Oh, God help me. I'm a consumer. And industry has ceased to function as a supplier to the consumer. They've taken on the role of dictator. Our needs are no longer met. Products of all sorts are forced upon us without and regard that's to... that's why he came after you with a knife. Well, pretty much, yes. I'd have to say so. He said you stole his car. I didn't steal it. It was paid for in full. I didn't even haggle. Said the check you gave him wasn't any good. Well, I didn't expect him to try to cash it the same day. He said he's been to the bank every day for the past six weeks. Didn't they cash it for him? They told him the account was closed. How did that happen? Oh, gee, I could only guess. <laughs> well, I'll talk to the guy tomorrow and straighten it all out. The guy with the knife? <laughs> no, the guy at the bank. There's obviously been some sort of misunderstanding. While we're on the subject of misunderstandings, did anything I say give you the impression that my birthday was coming up this week? You said you were a Taurus? Aries. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Is there any more of that chow mein? No. Do you want to know I... why I asked? I don't want to pry. I'll tell you anyway. It seems that someone has been calling every friend I have in the world and inviting him to a birthday party for me. <laughs> That's great and asking every person for a $30 donation to help cover party expenses. Sounds like it's going to be a great party. Oh, seeing that the guys collected about $3,000, I'll say it'd be one hell of a party. Only it's not my birthday, and I don't think this guy, whoever it is, has any intention of giving me a birthday party. No? No, it sounds to me like someone needs to have his engine rebuilt. I resent the implication. And what is the implication? 
Well, I don't know, but I just don't think I should be in a position to have to defend myself. That's just as well, because your position is indefensible. Why does everyone always see the glass as half empty? I mean, it's half full. You've been putting up with me. I mean, you've been putting me up. <laughs> I've been putting up with you. <sighs> and I think you've been great. I was in need and you helped me out. I'd like to help you out. And whether or not it's your birthday, my throwing a party for you should be seen as a monumental expression of friendship and gratitude. Extended from me to you. A little overextended. Look, why don't you just give me the $3,000 and I'll see it gets to all those people and save too much embarrassment. Oh, I can't do that. Why not? Well, your friends are expecting a party. They'll survive without one. For another reason, I already spent some of the money. On party preparations. How much? $2,600. $2,600? What did you spend it on? A new engine for my car. Oh, my God. Well, some of your friends need a transportation, and I couldn't ask you to pick them up. It wouldn't be a surprise. What's a surprise party without a surprise? The only thing I regret is that I don't have a knife as big as that one as the guy who came around this afternoon. Well, the other $400, was that going to be spent on a party or was that your ticket out of here? First of all, let me assure you one thing. Whether or not I stuck around for it, there would have been a party. Well, if your idea of a party is having people show up on my doorstep and not have... I ordered a cake of beer. They're going to deliver it. Keg of beer. Forty bucks. And what about food? You know, in this day and age, some people eat red meat, others don't. I can arrange for some chips. Are you wanted by the police or anything? Why do you ask? It would just fit in with everything else that's going on around. Probably not. Huh. Statue of limitations run out? Ha ha! So, you're a con man, a scam artist, huh? <laughs> Kinda. Grifter, you know. <clears throat> I move around a lot. Did you ever see the sting? You must be pretty good at sizing people up, right? Yeah, if I do say so myself. I mean, if you're no good at sizing up a mark, uh, you're not going to last too long in this business. What do you make of me? Oh, <laughs> you're a great guy. No, but beyond that, what? Well, uh, I... Um, do you know what I do for a living? Business major. Probably in accounting. Uh, maybe an exec with a computer or insurance company. Well, uh, you're close. Yeah? Yeah. I'm a county deputy sheriff. Jesus Christ. Surprised? Well, I would be if I was trying to scam you. Thank God I'm not. Did you know? What? That you have the right to remain silent. Oh, no. You didn't know? Please don't do this to me. Surely you've been arrested before. Not under this name. That just slip out? Shit. How many names do you have? Oh, about a dozen. I stopped counting. You know, you go to all that trouble, and you're still not making it. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> you're shacked up in my living room, if that's your idea of affluence and abundance. Look at it this way. I meet a lot of good people. Kind folks. Folks who... We're willing to reach into their hearts. Are you reaching into their pockets? They can write it off. Oh, I can claim you as a dependent. <sighs> no. They just tell their accountants it's money gone bad or something. 
Well, how many people have you ripped off? Not one. Not a single one. Let me put that another way. How many people have parted with money on your behalf? Oh, hundreds. In fact, they'd probably put me in the Book of World Records if they kept track of such things. <laughs> Just as well for you that they don't. So you're a cop, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Why'd you get into it? What's the matter? I'm working on something here. Go with me. I wanted to help. You wanted to help? <clears throat> Great. What'd you want to help? People. You wanted to help people, didn't you? That's why you became a cop. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Well, here's your chance. Because I know it isn't easy being a cop. You try to help, but nothing seems to help. Am I right? I just keep busting the same guys over and over again. Well, there you are. Doesn't seem to help much, does it? Oh. Well, if there was something else I could do. And you'd do it, wouldn't you? Yeah, I guess so. Well, here's your chance. To help. To really make a difference. To change one man's life forevermore. And how do you suppose I do that? I'm closing in on my 43rd birthday, and I don't have to tell you what hell I could be. I'm 35. <clears throat> well, one day you'll be 43, and then you'll know. What will I know? You'll know that at 43, man begins to face the reality of who he is as he heads into the second half of his life. Mm -hmm. And for me, I don't want to make this personal, but I have to. As I stand before the mirror, I must tell you, I don't like what I see. Well, that's in your favor. I want to change. I must change. You can help me change. I could arrest you and put you behind bars, and that would... <sighs> that would reinforce the pattern of behavior that has led me to this day. Yeah, but at least you'd be out of my living room and behind bars. You know what I need? What do you need? I need people. I'm a people person. I need to surround myself with good folks. There's going to be about a hundred of them here next Monday night. They're all going to want their money back. I get it. You want me not to arrest you so that you can give all those good folks their money back, right? Uh, no. I'm talking about different folks. New folks. Uh, people, uh, if I could just do one thing good for them, I... It'd make up for everything. I'm really moved. In all my career, I've never heard such a thing coming from a felon. Felon? I've only done a couple of misdemeanors. Well, the $3,000 rates felony consideration, but let's not quibble about that. So you want to make amends? Amends? Huh. I don't know. What, what do you mean you don't know? Well, you make it kind of sound like I've done something bad. Well, you kind of have. Depending on how you look at it. The way I look at it, you ought to be in jail. Well, we don't want that. If there's just something other than amends that I can call it. Uh, we could call it a jester. Probably not the jester you usually afford your victims. <laughs> what do you mean, like the one-finger salute? Yeah, exactly. So what's it going to be? You know, the one thing I've found to be true in all my comings and goings is that people like to laugh. I don't know why. It's a form of magic, I guess. All I know is that whenever I'm able to make people laugh, I'm able to lighten their souls. Well, you lighten their wallets. My friend, I'm attempting to be reasonable with you. 
But if we're going to make any progress here, you're going to have to come to grips with the underlying antagonism that insinuates itself in everything you say to me. I have come to grips with it. If I come to grips with anything, it'll be your neck, and I'll break it in two. That was beneath you. Maybe you hold me too high in your esteem. Don't belittle yourself. Remember this. People can't chip away at you unless... Unless... Unless what? I'm trying to remember. Uh, unless you let them or something. <laughs> I get the picture. Yeah? You're trying to butter me up so I won't arrest you. Exactly! No, no. That's not, not exactly. Yeah. That's close. I just have one question for you. What? How good are you with a hammer and nails? Well, I know what they are. That's close enough. This place needs a needs quite a few repairs. We're gonna do some repairs to this house of mine. And then maybe I'll consider letting you off the hook. You mean not arrest me? Exactly. Well, okay. If it's not too strenuous. <laughs> I'm gonna work your tail off. All right. Within limits. Now, how about this party? You take care of the repairs. I'll take care of the party. Great. Great! So when do we start? <laughs> you can start first thing in the morning. No problem. I can handle that. <clears throat> I'll tell you what I'll do. Uh, right after dinner, I'll run down to the hardware stores and I'll pick up a few supplies. I can see we've got a lot of work to do ahead of us. Uh, I can say that again. Why don't you give me two... I'll make it $300 to cover the cost of supplies. What do you say? You have the right to remain silent. If you give up that right, anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. 